Hi everyone, it's Morgana here, and welcome back, uh, and welcome to Experiments Part 1. Uh, today I'm going to be painting for you the landscape you see on screen now. Uh, here are my colours. Uh, I'll go through them in more detail in the video. Um, so yeah, starting off with uh, a pencil sketch. Uh, this is uh, very loose, as you can see, just a few details, uh, mountains, water, etc. Going to sort of see where the paint takes me today. So I'm starting off with the sky. Uh, I'm going to use uh, a technique called wet and wet painting uh, for the sky, which involves uh, wetting the paper beforehand. This is 100% cotton paper, uh, so it takes the uh, water quite well. And you can see I'm starting uh, with a bit of yellow. Uh, this is a raw sienna uh, that I'm just blobbing in here. Uh, I don't mind it going over the lines I've drawn for the mountains because they are obviously going to be a dark colour uh, which will go over the yellow uh, so I don't mind it uh, bleeding over a little as you can see here. I just want to get a nice sort of soft uh, diffusion of colour going up towards the top of the page where I am now going to put in some darks. I wanted a nice uh, dramatic sky. <laughs> I was in the mood for a stormy sky. Uh, so you can see me here combining the lovely uh, colours Prussian Blue and Payne's Grey and uh, broad sweeps to uh, get that lovely sort of blue-grey thundercloud uh, sort of effect. And see I'm just spraying that a little bit with my water spray to encourage the granulation and to encourage it to spread the paint. I'm now tipping it all a little bit, tipping my board and my paper. You can see with the uh, wet and wet how the colours are merging together. taking a little bit of paint out with the tissue just because I wanted so I wanted a lighter patch there. I'm also going to mop up some of this paint that you can see. This is the only trouble with adding additional water with a water spray is you will get this happening uh, either at the bottom uh, of your line of where you've been doing the wet and wet or sometimes down to your masking tape uh, if you are not careful. See I'm just going in and very carefully trying to uh, add in a little more dark colour on the right hand side there. The important part of doing a wet and wet sky like this I found on my previous uh, disaster attempts is once you've got those colours in uh, you leave it be. Uh, the temptation is of course to go in with the brush and start dabbing and uh, prodding and um, seeing what you can do with it but really at this point you can see here I'm just spraying to get rid of that Sort of darker block there that I decided I didn't like but again I'm not putting the brush in trying not to change it too much just giving it a good sharp spray to uh, push some of that paint down the pigment down which I can then pull out um, as for the main part of the sky that lovely broad sweep along the top uh, I'm just going to leave that be now that can that can sit there and you can see I've uh, moved on to the landscape give me a lovely lake below uh, with obviously reflections. So I'm dry brushing in again some raw sienna uh, to reflect the colours that I've used on the sky. I'm using exactly the same colours. Uh, I'm going to come in here with some uh, Prussian blue as well just to uh, echo those blue tones. Uh, you can see that's quite pale as well. You'll see I will come in in a minute with uh, some Payne's grey. You see my brush looks a little hesitant, <laughs> that's because it was. <laughs> uh, this video is called Experiments for a reason. Uh, I do not habitually do landscapes, but uh, you know, sometimes you just get in the mood to do something, you just feel really inspired and you think, hey, you know, hey, I wanted to have a go at that. So that's what this is. Uh, and really, I think that happens to a lot of people, not just me, us uh, amateur artists, we just see something, we go, hey, that's really beautiful. You know, I'd like to have a go. You can see I'm just trying to make these lovely broad sweeps uh, with my uh, with my uh, Hartley brush 
there that I'm using uh, to get my uh, lake to vaguely mimic the, uh, the colours of the sky above. And there we are, this is what it looks like. Now it's dry, I had to leave that fully uh, for quite some time. Uh, but now I feel comfortable, it's dry enough, uh, I'm going to put in the lake shore. Uh, so what I've done is I've mixed up a little bit of burnt umber here uh, and it's on my palette along with my other colours uh, and I am just placing it gently over, you can see over where the uh, the lake colour is, the, um, the Prussian blue and the Payne's grey is actually working really well to give uh, tone and depth to this part of the land. I want this to be quite loose uh, and um, I want a bit of uh, granulation as well, a bit of texture is what I'm hoping for from the paint here which is why I'm sort of plodding in with extra water and extra paint sort of here and there. You see me now adding in a bit more on the top, I want some nice dark lines. Uh, this is some paint grey I'm just popping in here and um, I want to give the impression of height and depth. You can see that sort of line at the front there uh, and then I'm keeping a little bit of the blue as shadow at the back of the land there. Using the same technique to put in the far shore over there. Um, I can apologise for my uh, mucky paint hand. Uh, I didn't realise at the time but I managed to smear Prussian blue everywhere. Um, <laughs> it happens. Um, as you can see this is a, a mixture of colours that I'm using here. Uh, on my palette I've sort of muddied up my um, Prussian blue, paint straight and burnt umber together with some water uh, and it's given me this lovely or sort of always neutral grey brown colour which I'm really enjoying uh, and I think is really wonderful to use for sort of far off distant land. Uh, I think the brown gives it a little bit of warmth uh, which I think it needs to combat the sky but also at the same time it's not too sort of uh, sort of bright false colours which you sometimes get uh, using just plain, just pure sort of pigments unmixed. Uh, my, uh, my paint palette does look rather a mess um, at the moment, I'll show you it shortly uh, and you'll be able to see how I'm sort of mixing all these colours together. You can see I'm just putting in the mountain now uh, and I'm actually using the same colour that I used to do the late shore but a slightly diluted version, sort of soft brown grey colour. The reason I decided to uh, only use these four colours here is because although I wanted to show uh, lots of depth in the landscape, um, I also wanted everything to sort of harmonise uh, and I think the, uh, the easiest way to do that is to try and keep a limited uh, colour palette. You can see I'm not worrying too much about getting too much detail, sort of picky detail in the mountain. I'm sort of encouraging the paint to move and, and flow where it likes. Um, I should say also my um, my easel, my, my painting board is set at a roughly uh, sort of 45-ish, maybe slightly less uh, degree angle, uh, which is why my paint runs down. Uh, it's deliberate. Uh, I would really I enjoy uh, painting at that angle for one, and uh, I also like the effect that the paint has when it runs. It means I can sort of pop it in there at the top. Uh, you can see me popping in some paint grey uh, here with my flat brush to. Uh, to pop in a bit of shadow and uh, without any help from me it just uh, diffuses gently down uh, with a bit of help from the, uh, the angle of my easel.
There we are, happy with the mountains for now. Putting in the uh, the secondary hills that lie in front of them. And uh, you can see I'm using a much paler wash uh, version of the same colour that I have just been using. Just putting that in. I'm not worried too much about being neat. I want a lot of lovely texture here. Uh, otherwise, you know, in the landscape, I just don't want it to look like a big flat blob. So I'm sort of going over and over with my brush, pulling different textures out, uh, doing just little sweeps and swipes, enjoying that uh, granulation that I'm getting there from the Payne's Grey. Uh, and yeah, just putting a bit more texture into those hills. Here you can also see I'm making it a little paler. I'm actually coming in again with some more raw sienna, my yellow colour. Not too much, obviously. Uh, I don't want them to be yellow hills, but um, just to sort of uh, give the impression of that light reflecting back up from the ground that's coming from the sky. Again, keep trying to keep that lovely harmony of colours, which I think is uh, working really nicely so far. Now for additional texture on the hills, um, I'm using just an uh, ordinary bit of tissue, just to blot out if you crumple it up, uh, you can get some nice texture if you're careful. Daisy, everyday bod roll. <laughs> and uh, in a minute, there we go. This is my palette. This here is the sort of muddy grey combination of colours. You can see uh, it comes from uh, all my colours sort of merging together. Uh, that's how uh, thin my paint is, using lots of water. And now I'm just using that to go straight in and do this uh, other hill that's uh, closest to us. And you can see that lovely granulation there coming from the Payne's Grey. Of course you can um, achieve that effect from other paints as well if you are uh, careful and if you, have, uh, if you use granulation medium for example. Uh, some paints will also more naturally be inclined uh, to granulate, such as uh, ultramarine blue, for example, is pretty well known for it. Uh, some people don't like it, and I admit it can be an absolute pain sometimes <laughs> when you really uh, are looking for a nice flat, uh, clean colour and it starts splitting out. Um, but here I am enjoying the granulation effect very much. And you can see here, just using my brush to uh, gently put in a little bit line of extra, sort of thicker Payne's Grey and just give uh, a little bit of uh, definition to that very farthest uh, lakeshore there. You can see already how that line of paint, hard line of paint, has um, uh, diffused up into the, um, into the rest of the hills. These little uh, front shores, these closer shores now, are dry, as you can tell from the fact that my paint uh, is going on them cleanly, it's not diffusing, I'm getting a few of those uh, harder lines, uh, which uh, I like for a little bit of depth. I've also decided to uh, adjust my mountings a little bit. And now here we go with the last few touches. 
I'm going in with my uh, fine detail brush. This is my triple zero round brush. Uh, I'm just putting in a few simple details, uh, some plant life, uh, a few sort of hedges and sedges, <laughs> and uh, some reed beds perhaps. Uh, just uh, giving a little bit of life to this landscape, making sure it doesn't uh, doesn't look flat. Uh, I'm using my Payne's grey to uh, to do this, and a little bit of burnt umber as well. I've mixed them both on the palette uh, to get a nice sort of mid colour, mid tonal colour, which is also what I'm using to put in this tree. I decided that as the sky was so uh, lovely and dramatic, uh, the tree would be as well. So you can see it's it's listing over to the left quite dramatically, uh, as though it's uh, in a place driven by high winds. this point I continue to add in a few extra details you can see a tree on that farthest shore uh, and I decided I wanted a bird as well <laughs> anyone who watches this channel regularly knows how much I love birds so uh, I've traced uh, an eagle from one of my bird books a lovely eagle golden eagle silhouette uh, and I've decided where I want to put it uh, after tracing it very lightly with a pencil there I'm just filling it in with my fine brush again uh, I'm using burnt umber for this, um, mostly burnt umber, a little bit of paint spray to darken it down as well. And there we have it, the finished painting. Um, I'm really happy with this. Um, this was an experiment after all and I'm uh, really excited to share it with you and uh, share how it came out. It just goes to show that, you know, we're all still learning. <laughs> we're all still discovering how to do different styles, different compositions. Uh, in retrospect, I think my eagle is too large, a little. Uh, if I was to do this again, I'd probably do a smaller bird just for the scale and distance to work properly. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as uh, this was um, a real new thing for me, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I um, hope to keep doing more sort of landscapes like this. Let me know if you'd like to see them. Uh, leave a comment below. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And thank you very much for watching and uh, happy creating, everybody. Uh, bye.